Longhorn Nation, we're back. Social media and Twitter is what's destroying this country anyway. So that's how I feel about it, from politics to sports to whatever. It gives people a platform to bitch, and then other people are like needling it, and they're sitting at home, and they're late on a payment. We're David, <laughs> they're Goliath, and we, we go out there and play. Why not us? Like, think about that. Who played in 2019? Who played in 2020? Why not Texas Tech? Well, I was reading the, the game notes and said, your offensive line had a missed assignment. Pretty good. Uh, I don't, where, the, where the hell that come from? I don't know. I don't read the notes. Sorry, I, but but I, I don't know if that's accurate. Uh, one guy, one person in the history of this program that's bigger than the program. We are back. It is time for another episode of the Big 12 Takeover. My name is Tyler Davis. I'm joined by my good friend and co-host, Donnell Davis. What's up, man? How you doing? I'm doing good, man. I've been chomping at the bit to get back here today. I'm ready to rock with you. I know, man. Okay. Every week, it seems like the week gets longer, right? Like, we got to wait right. longer in between episodes. This is getting we're, we're getting turned up over here. It's starting to, it's starting to pick up some speed. Uh, we're, we're, you know, about halfway through, well, just under halfway through the Big 12. Uh, tonight, we're going to talk about Kansas State University, the Wildcats. Uh they have one of the coolest recruiting gimmicks, I think, in, in the, the Big 12 with the barbershop. I uh, can't wait to, to dig into these guys. Um, but as always, I got to do my housekeeping. Uh, I got to keep things in order here so we don't get in trouble. Um, we are the Big 12 Takeover. We are part of the Takeover Sports Network on YouTube. Uh, be sure to go over to the Takeover Sports Network channel. Subscribe so you can follow along and get all the videos. We're picking up steam, guys. We got a lot of content coming out. We got a lot of different shows. Um, and it, even as cool as it is, uh, the SEC takeover just did a, an open mic type scenario where they let people come on uh, and talk about the SEC as a whole. It was super cool. Um, make sure you follow along because these things are going to pop up from time to time. And there's NFL guys in this network. So if you want a chance to talk to an NFL player, there's your shot, man. It's, it's pretty cool. Uh, be also sure to follow at Takeover Pods on Twitter. That is the overarching network Twitter account. That's where the updates for all the new episodes are going to come from. Um, as well as updates on anything we're working on in, the, in the, behind the scenes. And then you can go over to Twitter and follow us at Big 12 Takeover as well. That's B-I-G-1-2 Takeover. Um, you can communicate with me and Donnell through that. I'll also be tweeting out updates and kind of happenings around the Big 12 um, a, as they happen. So if you, uh, you want to follow along there, that's where you get your updates. And then, this is my favorite part of every week. We are brought to you and sponsored by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the easy way to play daily fantasy and player props in states like California, New York, Texas, Colorado, and more. Uh, Prize Picks offers every sport you could think of, right? NFL, college football, NBA, college basketball, MLB, soccer, MMA. It wouldn't surprise me if they had cricket and rugby. They have everything, man. You can combine picks across multiple sports as well. You can take the over on Max Scherzer strikeouts. You know he's going to get a lot of them, man. Max is a wild man. And the under on LeBron assists if you wanted to. Uh, I don't know that that's the best betting you can do, but LeBron is, uh, you know, he's getting old. He might, he might hit the under a few times. Prize Picks is safe and easy to use. You can place picks in under 60 seconds, and they offer fast withdrawals. Get your money as quickly as possible as soon as you win it. Uh, and make sure, if you're going to sign up, use code TAKEOVER to get 100% deposit match up to $100. Turn that 100 into 200. Turn that 200 into 2,000. We're here to help you do that. Prize Picks. Easy to play, easy to win, and uh, with the housekeeping out of the way, we're going to dive into some Kansas State Wildcat football. This is a team, Donnell. This is a team. A very uh, good team. They're good. They, uh, they're, they're a lot of fun to uh, look at this roster. I think K-State's a lot closer, I think, than maybe some people are thinking. I have this to team apologize. Because <laughs> I, I I know on a previous episode I mentioned that K State was probably going to lose to Kansas or <laughs> Baylor or I mean Baylor maybe but man I have to apologize but whew. they got a good team they and they're returning some really good pieces um, before we get into returners and everything though I do want to talk a little bit just kind of about the season they had last year um, so we can you know. We got to set the stage so then we can talk about the future of this group. So head coach Chris Kleiman uh, came over from North Dakota State a few years back. 
Uh, new offensive coordinator, Colin Klein, uh, replaced um, former coach Courtney Wessingham at the end of the year last year. We'll talk about that. And uh, defensive coordinator Joe Klanderman. They're going to be running um, some pretty multiple offense uh, under Klein. Uh, Klein has stated in these spring interviews they want to stay multiple. Uh, they want to have a lot of different formations. They want to get a lot of people involved. Um, but as it stands last year, they finished fifth in the Big 12. Um, they're four and five in the conference, which, which was a pretty disappointing uh, conference record for them. They finished eight and five overall, however, and they did win the Texas Bowl against LSU uh, 42 to 20. Breakout. Interestingly, huh? I say that is a breakout game. That was a breakout game. And, and I think it's, it's worth noting, too, um, they were winning 42 to seven with 10 minutes to go. <laughs> so that they even 42 went off the to gas. Yeah, yeah, that 42-20 to 20 is being generous to LSU. Um, the other interesting note about that game, last year, uh, looking at their schedule, they only scored over 40 in that game. That was the only game they scored over 40. Um, closest they got was 38, which still, that's good offensive performance. Um, but worth noting, that's the only game that new offensive coordinator for this upcoming fall, 2022, called. Uh, Colin Klein was the quarterback's coach. Up until that point, um, they promoted him to play caller for the bowl game, and he evidently put on a show. Uh, looked, you know, <laughs> called a good game. The, they were humming. Uh, you kind of look at some of these touchdowns they had here. They had a uh, Malik Knowles with a 25-yard catch from Skylar Thompson, Deuce Vaughn with a run, Malik Knowles with a five-yard pass from Skylar Thompson, uh, Deuce Vaughn with another run, Deuce Vaughn with a catch from T Skylar Thompson, Deuce, Deuce Vaughn with another run. Um, <laughs> I mean, this offense was humming, man. Uh, they were they were scoring. They scored twenty one to start the game before LSU sniffed an end zone. Pushed them uh, in the mouth. Game was yeah, over. yeah. K. I mean, K State, and I, I will say, as as far as I can remember, K State has always been really good in bowl games. Right. Um, I don't know what it is. They seem to really turn it up uh, bowl season. I think that extra preparation. You know, going back even under Bill Snyder, they did a really good job of preparing. Um, for I mean, they games. usually they usually have a great defense. So yep. I think that carries over to bowl season. You have all that time to prepare for one team, and they get yep. the key on key in on what the other team does best, and they take they take those playmakers out the game, and that's exactly what they did against LSU. Yeah, man, they that defense. They you know I remember back when they had like Arthur Brown, um, that defense, man. They, <laughs> I remember when they were ranked first in the country. I'll never forget it. It was uh, twenty twelve. They came. They went down to Waco. Waco or Baylor beat them. Do you remember this? They were first in the nation. I think we were both at Tabor at the time. Yeah, we were at Tabor uh, at the same time. Yeah. K State fans were big sad. Uh, <laughs> it was crazy, man. That game was nuts. It was a it was a night game. Uh, it was Insane. Baylor. Baylor blew them out, and everybody was like, "What just happened?" Because yep. I mean, K State was foot on the gas on the way to the national championship, which is insane to think. All about. you heard on campus all day was noise talking from K State fans. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Never it never yeah. ended. And, you know, even even since then, they've not been, you know, nearly as good, but they're always consistently in the middle of the pack, top half of the, you know, top half of the league. This year, they just happen to fall right in the middle. Um, so with that, you know, they're going to be, they, they got some guys leaving, um, you know, and, and we're going to talk about that, uh, you know, first off. And, you know, it's always a big deal when you lose your quarterback, Skylar Thompson. Uh, Skylar Thompson, pretty mobile guy, decent arm, not a great. So the numbers tell you he's a great passer, and and I think it, I think it's sometimes important. Numbers are inflated. Yes, so sometimes those numbers look a little strained, right? He's a sixty nine percent completion percentage and a one fifty nine point three rating, um, twelve touchdowns, four picks. But he only threw for twenty one hundred yards, um, and he only attempted two hundred and thirty three passes. And so as a passer, Skylar Thompson wasn't a guy, you know, who was going to light you up. You didn't have to worry about him dropping back and, and picking you apart. Now, with his legs, you know, he, he could move. Right. And, and he could he could move a little bit and make some plays if he needed to off schedule. Um, but he, you know, he wasn't lighting the world on fire as a passer. I mean, you, you look at their, their leading receiver last year was Phillip Brooks with 543 yards. Right. So I mean they weren't they weren't throwing it around the yard. 
I mean, but I, maybe that has to do with Kyler Thompson. And I think they actually made an upgrade at quarterback. And I'll let you talk about that a little bit later. Uh, but this is probably a case where a team probably improved at the quarterback position. Yeah, yeah, they they're gonna lose a guy, you know, that they they really liked. Skylar Thompson's very popular amongst K State um, fans. I know there's always a part of the fan base that you know hates people. Like there's Iowa State fans who hate Brock Purdy, which I think is insane. <laughs> um, there's gonna be K State fans who hate Skylar Thompson. Honestly, I think right. he did exactly what they asked him to do, and I think he did it pretty well. Uh, when I go back and kind of watch some of their tape um, as I was studying for the episode, uh, but one of the big things I think in the middle. Uh, in front of the quarterback that they're losing is Noah Johnson. Um, I, I, you know, Noah Johnson, he was an offensive lineman. He did, he did, Colin Klein even uh, talked about it in the spring interview. He talked about how Noah just did so much for them up front, um, whether it was, you know, getting people aligned or calls or, you know, he just did a really good job of holding that group together and being a leader for them. Um, and, they're, they're, you know, interestingly enough, he went to high school. I, I didn't know this until I was researching. He went to high school like a mile away from my house. Um, he went to Bishop Carroll High School here in Wichita, Kansas. Really good player. Wow. I'm going to read you some of his accolades. He was a 2021 honorable mention All Big 12 from the coaches. He was 2020 in 2020 he was second team All Big 12. 2020 honorable mention Big 12 Offensive Lineman of the Year. 2019 through 21 first team academic All Big 12. So this is a dude. You know he he was a great football player. One, two. Uh, he he was a, a great. Uh, leader, great role model off the field, did a good job in that locker room of, of you know, keeping things focused for them. Um, so those are the two big pieces, you know, I I wanted to talk about on that offense. Uh, Noah Johnson may be the biggest loss on that team. Yeah, they're going to feel that um, pretty heavily. I'm not sure you can replace that because – that's Creed Humphrey level type. Oh, that's a uh, that's uh that's big praise. Creed Humphrey's big. Uh, well, I'm saying as far as like you know calling out the protections, getting offensive linemen and uh, the cadence down and things like that. Like that's a big deal for any offensive team. I feel like you you want that at the center position. Yeah, the the center position, you know, as as a quarterback is is kind of the guy who keeps everything straight in front of you right um you know if if your center if you don't have to worry about your center messing things up or any whoever is making your calls usually it's the center um you know they could that, that can completely change the complexion of an offense um and, and what you're able to do and with k-state's attempt to be multiple they got to have people in positions to make the right calls for them to make sure everybody's doing the right things um right. defensively uh, but you know, I'd like I'd like to move over to their defense. They're... They lose a, they lose a couple pieces over there. I mean, they, you're gonna they, lose. They <sighs> do, but I think the the nucleus of that defense is intact. Still intact, right? And so, like, I don't. And know. honestly, I think the people that are coming in, they may be better playmakers than the ones that left. Right, and like, it's weird. I don't. When I was looking at this, I was like, man, I don't even really know <laughs> who to mention. Like, they they just – they've kind of just reloaded, right? Yeah. Like, they, they're going to lose Cody Fletcher. Like, that's going to hurt, sure. But, like, they keep Daniel Green. Who, so they, who slides into his spot. Right. Who, who will just, you know, step over and just dominate right away. Um, and they lose uh, – I believe they lose Ross Elder – which that will hurt um, considerably. You know, Ross Elder, big-time contributor from the, the secondary, 38 solo tackles, uh, big time. four pass breakups, a pick. Um, you know, 53 total tackles as a DB is always a, a, a popping number in my mind if they're not, you know, in-the-box type safety. Uh, right. So they're, they're going to lose a little bit there. Um, but they got a couple guys coming in, and that's kind of where I want to get to next. I want to talk about kind of some of this class that's coming in and, you know, how how this group uh, is going to impact this team um, immediately or, you know, two years from now, a year from now. Um, but I think what they're bringing in this year is going to be impactful, and I think it's going to be impactful right away. 
right um, away. Earlier, you you made a comment about upgrading at the quarterback position, right? We have Adrian Martinez as a grad transfer from University <laughs> of Nebraska. I think most people know who Adrian Martinez is, right? Like, if, if you're a college football fan, he was a part of the best bad football team last year I think you'll ever see. Uh, right. That Nebraska OU game last year was electric. Big time. And um, Adrian Martinez, you know, I mean, I'm just going to read you the numbers here. Uh, <laughs> last year, 189 for 306, 2,800 yards, 14 touchdowns, 10 picks, 148.9 rating. Uh, rushed for 525 and 13 touchdowns. Uh, had a He did catch a pass for negative 11 yards. I thought that was funny <laughs> to mention. Um, but, Shows all the things that he can do. Yeah, I was going to say, so like if that doesn't tell you anything, he's athletic. And he's quite fast. Um, surprisingly fast. you think he's fast. faster than uh, Kyler Thompson? Skyler Thompson? Yeah, he's fast. Oh, yeah. Thompson? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, his speed kind of pops off the, the screen at you. Right, I figured. Um, the number that uh, kind of jumped off the screen to me, though, is he was sacked 27 times last year. Um, some of that, you know, is himself. Some of that is battle line play, um, playing in the Big Ten. You know, you're gonna people are gonna get after you, um, but he he is good, and he is an upgrade to Skylar Thompson because he's. I think he's a, just a better passer. Me too. Um, and I think he makes this offense a lot more dynamic. Um, right. I K State has never, to me, been a team that can just throw it around the yard. And I don't think Adrian Martinez is that kind of quarterback. Like, I don't think he's going to drop back and throw it 35, 40 times a game. Um, but I do think he'll throw it, you know, 20 to 27. Um, yeah, probably. Yeah. Playmakers to get it to this time, though. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, Nebraska, like I said, the best bad team in football last year. They yeah. lost so many <laughs> close games. It's unbelievable. Um, but one of the things, you know, I kind of – I was, I was really curious about him leaving Nebraska, right? Because they were so close last year um, to winning a lot of those games. And I started digging into why he left. And part of it was injuries. Um, he broke his jaw last year. This did not make super wide news. Yeah, that's insane. Um, he broke his jaw and asked that they kept it quiet. And instead of wiring his mouth shut, they would rubber band it shut. So they would put these like they put these like rods in his mouth, and they would rubber band his mouth shut uh, anytime he wasn't doing media availability. And then if he had media availability, they'd take the rubber bands off. He would go do the availability and then come back. Um, it, it was wild. I was, this I was, guy is tough. Yeah, he's tough as nails, and that's you know those are the kind of quarterbacks people rally around. When you get a quarterback right. who can just you know take damage and, and keep coming back and keep. You know, not wanting more, but wanting more. Um, your team's going to rally, like naturally, they're going to rally. And you know, he's even this spring. Um, and this is, I think, the the only detriment he brings is he came injured. He came to K State injured. Uh, he has a shoulder problem. He had some shoulder surgery. He's not throwing yet. Um, it's March thirty first. Spring ball is just about over for them. Um, so he's going to. You know he's going to miss all of spring ball. Uh, I don't think that's a huge deal. I, I, he's a he's a grad transfer. He's played four years. He knows what he's doing. He knows how the game works. He just has to learn seems the like offense. Than that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It seems like he's been around forever. Um, he's taken the mental reps though. I yeah. mean, we've we've done it as players. We've we've been right. injured and had to take mental reps, and um, sometimes they benefit you better. And you know maybe sometimes a change of scenery will benefit him as well. Um, some interesting things he noted. Um, in his presser, uh, he wants to improve his decision making. Um, I think evidenced by the ten, the the ten picks he threw last year to the fourteen touchdowns. I think that's something he'll definitely uh, improve. Ball security again in that same category. And then this one kind of shocked me. He wanted to be better at studying film, um, and it just made me wonder how much he was getting from that staff at Nebraska right. um, to openly say that. And I think with Colin Klein there, I mean, Colin Klein He's was, have to be a film junkie. Yeah. Colin Klein was a hell of a football player and he was very smart. Right. Um, Colin Klein was very good at diagnosing what would work and finding soft spots on defenses. And, and he ran it well. A quick um, decision maker too. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. He didn't waste any time. And so I think, I think Martinez will benefit a lot from the tutelage of Klein. 
Um, slightly different, you know, quite a different style of player. Right. But but will definitely uh, will definitely reap some think, benefits of playing under Klein. I think that also uh, answers your question about the twenty the twenty seven sacks that he got. Mm-hmm. That yeah. uh, definitely improved with being a film junkie because I mean, if you get in there and watch film, you'll know what defenses are doing at least some of the time. Yeah. And, yeah, I mean, you you can you can attest to this as a player too. When you when you when you watch enough film, the game slows down, yep. and you can you can kind of and especially as a quarterback, um, when the game slows down, it gets a little bit easier for you, right? Because yep. you if, if the game slows down, it allows you to process your reads cleaner, um, and I think, I think I I just think he'll be a lot better at K State. I, th- I think K-State yeah. will be a better situation for him than Nebraska was. Not that Nebraska is a bad program, um, because it's not. I, I, Scott Frost is a hell of a coach. Um, and, and honestly, Nebraska, I think, will be much improved this year with yeah. or without, you know, without Martinez even. Um, but I, it just, I, I think some players just need a change of scenery, and I think Adrian Martinez was one of those players. And this is um, like the perfect marriage, because I feel like K-State needed a quarterback – like Martinez and Martinez needed K State. This is the he perfect did. marriage. He did. And I think it'll also help him that his girlfriend was at K State. <laughs> See, the perfect marriage is that yeah. is that that's probably it's, next for them. It's it is, it is. I hope I'm rooting hope for you. Is. I'm rooting for you, Mr. Martinez. <laughs> yeah. I am rooting for you. I, I am as well. Uh I, I think I think he'll be much improved and I'm actually really excited about what this offense could look like. Um, with Adrian Martinez, um, one more offensive player, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on him. Uh, that they're bringing in, um, they brought in nothing but three star players. It seems they they it didn't don't have even any. matter. <laughs> yeah, it, it, the K State is n- notorious for bringing in three star players and turning them into what looks like four and five star players. Right. It's kind of wild. Um, well, here's the but, thing, K State. I I was looking at it earlier, and if you look at their depth chart, there's no freshman starters. So everybody's mm-hmm. either a red shirt. Everybody, it seems, that come through the program, at least red shirt when they come in. So three-star, four-star, five-star, whatever. You're you're, you're going to learn and develop behind the other players. K-State does what everybody and their mom says KU should do. K-State gets the <laughs> homegrown kids from their area, they red shirt them, and they develop players. Yeah. And they're so good at it. They're so good good at it it's unbelievable they have a system in place and you know you you've been a witness to a system in place like that so yes. you know exactly how it works yes it, it's perfect they do it so well it's unbelievable um and <laughs> this is like it just blows my mind um you know there's a guy who who plays in the nfl from k-state and i think he's one of the most underappreciated receivers in the nfl that's tyler lockett Damn um, good. The Lockett family, they're all K State guys. Um, Kevin Lockett, Tyler Lockett, and the next generation, or I shouldn't say next generation, Tyler <laughs> Lockett's younger brothers come into K State. Uh, he's a three star receiver, doesn't jump off the film at you, uh, catches a lot of bubble screens and just kind of turns them into 10 to 15 yard runs, which is great. Um, but That's he's a Lockett. Pay. Yeah, yeah, 10 yards is the first down. You take that every, any day of the week. Um, but he's a locket, and he's going to be playing at K-State. And I would be remiss to, to acknowledge, if I did not acknowledge. I love that pedigree. Oh, my gosh, it's so good. It's they so let good. them I, do this again. They're about to get away with robbery again. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> every time. And, and, like, I listened to an interview with Kevin Lockett kind of talking about, like, oh, why did Sterling go here? Like, is it just because, you know, he's a locket? And they was like, no, no, no. It's not that at all. Um, it's just that K State was the first one to reach out and really show faith in him. And uh, I Stick wonder to why. What you know. Stick I don't know. To what you know. Exactly. Both sides. Both sides. Stick to what you know. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And so I won't doubt Sterling Lockett. Uh, I don't. He won't contribute right away. Um, but I do think he'll be a good player at K State in the future. And I think uh, K State's going to reap those benefits for sure. Um, but then on the defensive side of the ball, uh, I, I texted you about this guy. Um, safety DB, Kobe Savage. 
Man. Okay, for starters, for starters, right? This is the dopest name in this recruiting class. <laughs> right? Kobe, Kobe Savage. And Savage. <laughs> so dope. And when you type in Kobe Savage on YouTube, you know what you're going to find? You're going to find Kobe Bryant moments of him being an absolute dog. And yep. you actually have to type in like Kobe Savage football or Kobe Savage TJC or Texas A&M Commerce. Uh, <laughs> this dude... 5'11", 205. I mean, I have his whole bio memorized at this point. I, I cannot stop. I, I even showed my <laughs> boss at work. I even showed my boss at work this dude's highlights. Uh, Kobe Savage, 5'11", 205, transferring from Tyler Junior College, which is weird because I lived down there for four years. Um, former triple option quarterback. And according to his JC coach, he's a very high IQ player, um, very smart. Um, and I think... I think you kind of see some of that in his tape. Um, I'll let you kind of talk about, you know, the kind of player they're getting. Well, I mean, quarterback, like you said, he played quarterback, right? Yep. Quarterbacks make, they make great safeties. Because <laughs> they, usually they do. quarterbacks know exactly what the defense are doing. They know the coverages. They Sometimes I you probably even knew the snap counts at times. <laughs> so, I mean, I mean, you probably knew the defensive, the defensive alignments and what we were doing exactly yep. when we were doing it. And so, yep. I mean – that uh that kid he jumps off the screen oh yeah and he is explosive yes 511 doesn't face it doesn't phase him at all this kid is a ball hawk and he's not afraid to hit that's the that's the one thing that i saw in there i was like whoa <laughs> like, yeah he's physical yeah big he's nasty he's got a little nasty streak in him i think my favorite play on his entire t- well i can't say one because there's like several but two the two my two favorite plays so there's a play where he they're playing like a like a a cloud three type coverage, um, and he's the he's the rolling safety. He rolls down and kind of gets inside a little bit, finds grass, and he's like nothing here, and immediately bails to like the like the flats, almost like the flats, but like the the third, the hash third, or, or sorry, sideline third, um, and just jumps right in the la- the passing lane, picks it off, and I was like, see, that's a kid clearly studied film saw this on film and knew knew he was going to get that shot you don't um, see that much no no there's a lot of kids they just go to the spot and where they their coaches tell them to go and they play that spot they cover grass you don't cover grass <laughs> you find a man and you get there <laughs> yep. like, man, you're absolutely right and i think this kid he's already starting on the depth chart yeah yeah he's projected to be an immediate impact uh player um my second favorite play the running back is running they ran like an outside zone and he bounces it outside tries to hurdle somebody did you see this play he tries to he tries to hurdle the corner and kobe (laughs) savage obliterates him like through the sideline splashes him if you don't know what splashing someone is uh ask your offensive lineman friend what splashing someone is it's horribly painful to be on the receiving end splashes the dude and it is vicious this kid's gonna be able to eat up everything back there yes yes he he does everything well. He does nothing. Oh. Nothing on his tape to me looks bad. Um, this I is think, crazy because I actually think he might be in a run. He might get a Big Twelve player. I mean, oh, like an all-conference honor or something. Yeah. I think he will. I, I think he's going to be one they're talking about um, when when the postseason awards come out. He's from Paris, Texas. Um, like I, I said, five, love that. <laughs> five ten, two oh five. Yeah, I mean, he coming out of JUCO. He's the tenth ranked safety. Uh, 82nd player overall in the class. Um, I mean, dude's dude's a stud. Dude's a stud. And uh, last thing I'll say on him, if you want a tutorial on running the alley as a safety, this kid is uh, almost almost perfect at it. It's a damn near textbook. It he runs the alley so well. It's unbelievable. He's going to be a lot of fun to watch. I can't wait to see him against Baylor, honestly, Man, with how oh. much they run the ball and <laughs> how physical he is. He's going to get in there, and, and he's going to – He's going to get a chance to make a lot of plays. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He he wants to bang. I mean, he wants to come in there and hit you. He, he's yeah. not there for, for anything else. He's there to hit you and make you feel it. And yeah. um, it's going to be a lot of fun watching this kid. I, I think he is going to be one we're talking about at the end of the year. Um, when all this is said and done, 
Um, do you have any other recruits you want to talk about before we move into some returning players? Uh, no, I'm excited for the returning players. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't really see their recruiting class again. A bunch of three star players, and I'm not saying that to be disrespectful, but yeah. nobody jumps off the screen. And yeah, so, no. and no. so for me, uh, they're all going to come in and have to put their head down and work and mm -hmm. earn their spots. And eventually, they'll become players. But as of right now, I don't see any impact impact players coming in as far as high school Other, recruits. Yeah, as far as high school recruits go, and, and that's kind of K-State's MO, MO like we talked about. Um, they're more about developing their talent. They're going to sign some, K some, some Kansas kids, some Colorado kids. They're going to bring them in. Uh, they're going to they're gonna groom them into great football players. Uh, and and that's, that's the Kansas State way. Um, so the recruits we're not talking about today, we'll probably be talking about next year or two years from now. Um, when you know when these guys are starting to make big impacts on the field, um, and that's how you keep a program. That's how you they stay consistent. That's exactly. Right. Earlier, we were wondering how they do this. That's exactly how they do it. They let those yep. kids come in and develop, and take their time. Yep, yep. I mean, you know, just just quickly, I'll quickly go through their class. Uh, Jalen Clem, three star, offensive tackle. Adrian Lara, quarterback, three star. Donovan Ryman. A Raymond edge player, three star. Toby Osinsanmi, he's actually from Wichita. I should reach out. Uh, linebacker, <laughs> three star. VJ Payne, three star linebacker. Braden Lofton, three star tight end. I mean, this is it goes on. Every every single player is a three star. Every single one of them. Um, it, it's it's insane. They they also transferred in uh, Sean Robinson, and um, he's another safety. He's for, again. You guys are going to laugh at me. I, I feel like at this point it's earned. He's a DeSoto kid. Um, and I always say DeSoto players, they somehow <laughs> they somehow always beat – they just become ballers. Uh, he was a four-star coming out of high school. Uh, it, it's weird. He's He was committed to TCU in 2017 – or 2015. He was a class of 2017 player. So he's okay. a fifth year with a year of COVID eligibility. So he's an older guy. Um, but I expect him to make an immediate impact as well. Um, you know, probably not at the level of Kobe Savage, but um, he'll no, that man is destined to be great. <laughs> yeah, that dude's gonna—he's gonna make some noise. Um, and then the other immediate impact linebacker they brought in, six three and a half, two hundred twenty-five pound, four-star transfer from the University of Maryland. Go Terps, uh, Brandon <laughs> Jennings. Um, he's you know. Kid from Florida, a linebacker from Florida. You know he's fast. Uh, you know he's 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 long. He's I mean, he's six player. three and a half, right? He's he's gonna be he's gonna be all over the place. Um, I do. I, I have seen that some people project him more as an edge player um, because of his length and kind of his frame. Uh, we'll see kind of what K State does with him. I would assume they'll eventually move him to the edge. Um, yeah. But he's a he's a high motor kid, super physical. They know what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, super physical, always wanting to attack. Um, and they have some dudes on that defense coming back that are super physical and absolutely Ooh. are in attack mode all the time. Right. Um, we can <laughs> let's dig into some of these defensive returners. I'll let you kind of take the take the wheel here for a bit. I mean, when you first look at K State's roster and you see what they have coming back. Everything that stands out to me is their defensive line group. Mm -hmm. They're bringing back some boys, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, they yeah. are bringing back some boys. and It starts with Felix, the, one of the defensive ends. King. Man, he – when I tell you his get-off, I mean, and I, I remember when we were, we were researching this and I texted you and I was like, man, his get-off is insane. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, man, and I remember him playing against Texas as well. And I'm yeah. like, man, who is this guy? Like, and he had 11 sacks last year. Yeah. And I don't even think he was featured as the defensive end to, you know, really get after the quarterback. But that guy's explosive. You also have uh, Eli, I want to say Eli Huggins. Yep. The yep. DT. Yeah, he's super senior. He's got He's the extra eligibility guy coming back. Um, he'll help anchor that D line, you know, just with experience in the middle. Yeah. Nate Matlack. 
four sacks on a year. He was a four sack guy last year. I want to go back to Felix real quick before we get too much further down. Um, you know, he had 11 sacks. Six of those were against TCU. Six. Yeah, TCU six is a game. running team. <laughs> he had six sacks against TCU last year. <laughs> uh, he had six forced fumbles. Um, you know, my notes on him, just watching a little bit, he's a great speed rusher. He has a really nice stutter step move. Um, if you if you get a chance to see some of the TCU tape, he really does. Like, he has, like, this little, like, almost like a hezzy that he does. Mm-hmm. And it just yep. it completely kills people. You also Freezes. watch him uh, push people back a lot. He kind of collapses the pocket. He's strong, man. He's, He's good at so using his strong. hands. Once he um, lock him out. Yeah. Yeah, if he gets his hands extended on you, it's over. It, you're you're done for. High motor guy. Um, Did you see this, that safety he got against uh, Texas Tech? Yes. They were, yes. like, on the five-yard line. I'm like, how did that turn into a safety? <laughs> the, he, like, tackles the, the tackle with him. Like, he, he takes the tackle to the ground with the quarterback. Yeah, I'm like, this is insane. He's, that guy's he's great. In, He's crazy, um, and and just I'm gonna say his name, and I'm gonna I may butcher this if I do. Uh, laugh at me in the comments, Felix <laughs> Anu Duke Anu Uzoma. Uh, he's the D end. He will be playing on Sundays, and we will so, be talking about him in the future. This dude's gonna make some plays at at the next level. I'll um, even say he might go in the first round if he has a good year, a productive year. He if potentially he could. Yeah. Um, but I think any team that gets him. Uh, at, the, at the next level is going to be very happy uh, with with what they get. Um, sorry, carrying on. You said Nate Matlick. Uh, he'll be Matlack. He'll be good. Four sacks returning. Um, and then can this guy, huh? Can he can he raise it up to another level? Is my question for Nate. I think so. I think with the attention uh, that Felix will get, I think he will. Yeah. I I, I think the opportunity will be there for him. Um, the other thing with him too, though, he's only a sophomore, right? So he's, Redshirt he's gonna, sophomore. By the yeah, way. <laughs> he's going to have some time. Yeah, yeah. Every every player at that place, except for Felix, is is a redshirt. It seems, um, but they also have some depth with Cody Stufflebean. Uh, he played a little bit last year, um, mm-hmm. and and contributed with uh, Khalid Duke. As yeah, well. yeah. I mean they they have they have dudes, you know, kind of all over the place in their defense. But the one place we talked about their safeties, you know, had some guys coming in, but the one place we haven't talked about yet is linebackers. And they are bringing back Daniel Green. And Good return. They needed him. Daniel Green is a freaking problem. He is a beast. He is a problem. Sideline to sideline speed. You want to talk about, again, I feel like, and this is another thing, K-State's just such a well-coached team historically. Um, You want to learn how to scrape as a linebacker? This dude scrapes over the top so incredibly well. Um, You know, obviously every linebacker finds themselves out of position at some point, but he does a really good job of not letting himself uh, overplay things. Uh, It really lets the game come to him in, in, in the right way. Um, I think, I just think he's, I think he's so good. Anywhere's he, tw- <laughs> 22, which is dope. I think that linebacker group is going to be really good this year. I mean, they're always good, but they're going to be really good this year. Oh yeah. I mean, they're adding, they're adding that Brandon Jennings from Maryland, who's already, you know, on their projected death chart projected to start at the will. Um, he's going to, you know, be an impact player right away. He's a Terp. Terps go to the NFL. It's just how it works. Daniel yeah. Green in the middle, Khalid Duke on the on the Sam. That linebacker Kobe's core. The in the alley. Yeah. They're, now they're we see the vision core. of this defense. We see the vision now because you're yeah. not going to be able to run the ball on them. No, they got some killers on this defense. I, they're K State's going to be better. I think K State might shock some people this yeah. year. Um, I mean, Make you sure look, y'all use the prize picks. Yeah, use your prize picks and don't be afraid to bet on K State because I think they could, uh, they could, they could shock the world a little bit uh, this year. I, I don't know if they'll win the Big Twelve or anything like that, but they they might be in the discussion at the end of the year. Um, I mean, shoot, they they're always good for an upset win over somebody. Right. It, it seems. I mean, they always they always find a way. 
Um, and you know, another good thing about their defense is they're returning both of their starting corners. Yeah. So that's going to allow Kobe Savage to really, you know, get comfortable and not have to worry so much about the pass game because those two guys are going to, they're, they were pretty solid last year. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're going to be just fine. I, I think, I mean, just, I just, I think I, I was so shocked, you know, just to do a little digging on them. They're way, they're just way better than, than you would expect. I mean, they were 29th in the nation in points against. That's not bad. No, that's <laughs> considering considering how many you know how many teams there are. I I just I don't know, man. I think <laughs> like if you if you look at it this way, right? 29th in the nation, they average 21 points against them. They in the Big 20, 12. In the Big 12, in a, in a league where there's a lot of offense, and they uh, you know they average 27 and a half points for. And I think you know twenty seven points in the Big Twelve is just not going to get it done. No. Um, and and again, we're talking like they were bad. They were eight and five. Right. They're they're not a bad team. They they just you know they they were streaky last year. Um, you know we look you look at their schedule like how how it shook out for them last year. They they went they here just just let me paint the picture. Three wins in a row. Three losses in a row. Four wins in a row. Two losses in a row. Bowl win. They are just streaky, like, and that's just who they were. Um, but and these here's aren't the bad losses either. No, no. Um, let's quickly jump into who they're returning on offense because you know we gotta we gotta keep the show rolling. Um, we're gonna skip the top guy on the notes uh, for right now because I want to save him for last. Um, but I just want to quickly talk about we talked about pedigree earlier. Cade Warner this is a super senior wide receiver, son of Kurt Warner. Uh, Played two games last year, only had 14 catches in two games for 166 yards. Um, I would expect that he contributes, um, and I would expect that all of their receivers get uh, some boosts to their offensive numbers. Yeah. I mean, especially Uh, with Adrian being the the quarterback, he'll be able to get them the ball better than uh, Skylar Thompson, in my opinion. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then you have uh, two guys I, I see in the notes that you wanted to talk about. Malik Knowles and Phillip Brooks. Yep. I mean, these are two playmakers. Like, you, you play wide receiver, and these guys are edge breakers, in my opinion. They can break a defense if they get the ball. You know? Oh, yeah. And, and they're both return men. They both kick return and punt return. Mm-hmm. So that just tells you what type of skill set that they are that they have at the wide receiver position for mm-hmm. uh, the quarterback to yep. get the ball to. Yeah, they're, they're dynamic playmakers. Um, Malik Knowles is – Tied for fourth in school history and uh, bowl game touchdowns <laughs> with two. <laughs> uh, Malik knows, you know, when he gets the ball in his hand, he's dangerous. Uh, he, I wrote in the notes, and, and this is if if you want to laugh, touchdown catch against LSU where he juked old boy was filthy was what I wrote. Bad. It was so bad. I, I thought he broke old, uh, old boy. I thought he, he blew that dude's knees out. I, yeah, I could not God. believe it. It was disgusting. Malik Knowles. <laughs> you know who Malik Knowles reminds me of when I watch him? He reminds me of T.Y. Hilton. I don't know why. That's, um, a, good, that's a good comparison. Yeah, he's just the kind of – because he's good, you know, good deep. There's a couple plays I watched of him. Uh, he's really good at scramble drill too, which yeah. is a quarterback's best friend, especially with Skylar, Skylar Thompson last year with, you know, unscripted plays. Uh, he did a really good job of getting deep if he was shallow and, and vice versa. Uh, did a great job. I, I think Malik knows is a great returner um, to have for this receiver room. Uh, they have you know good, experienced players. Phillip Brooks, Malik knows, Cade Warner. Those are guys that are going to help that receiver group tremendously. Yeah. Um, and then you had mentioned R.J. Garcia. Uh, yeah, R.J. Garcia. Apparently, Colin Klein and Thad Ward both love this guy. They say he's been impressive. He's improved throughout the offseason. And don't be surprised to see him make an impact this upcoming year yeah yeah he he, uh he was a true freshman last year um you wouldn't believe it they (laughs) redshirted him uh (laughs) he did get a few snaps last year though against ku um he he i think he's he's a guy they're pretty excited about um and again their three returners are seniors they got up and coming freshman who's a redshirt freshman they they always seem to have they just everything's reloaded 
the the clip never empties for them program yep they that's the sign of a good program um but then they have a program changing player in my opinion and something i don't think they've had in since tyler lockett really and klein yeah and arthur Mm -hmm. brown like those guys that group that group was was so good back then yeah uh that 2012 season for them was so special uh but yeah this is and and i when I wrote the schedule for this podcast, <laughs> I wrote, uh, is this gentleman, is Deuce Vaughn a dark horse Heisman contender? And let's just quickly, I'm going to quickly recap you know, who he was. Uh, 235 carries last year, 1,404 yards, 18 Ooh. touchdowns, six-yard average. Um, that's, that's absurd. Uh, he was the second leading receiver on the team with 468 yards, added four touchdowns there. And here's what's crazy to me. Deuce Vaughn only had four games last year. He didn't go over a hundred. Four out of thirteen games, he didn't go over a hundred. That's consistent. and those are probably games that they lost. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Um, one of them, Iowa State, he had ninety nine. Uh, oh, Oklahoma, crazy. he had fifty one. Oklahoma State, he didn't. He he. He wasn't even the leading rusher. The leading rusher had twenty eight. Um, so I mean, those are the f- those are the four. And those games, he had good receiving yards too, though. Yeah, they beat Texas Tech, but he he only had fifty two. But he had sixty eight <laughs> receiving yards. He led the team in rushing and receiving, um, and they won by one. So, it, it, yeah. like this dude, Deuce Vaughn, he's he's very small. He's he's like five. He's listed at five six. He's not five six. Um, but he's, he's fast. Uh, he, the obvious comparison, and I I hate doing this, but it's Darren Sproles. I was going to say the same. The the guy who played at K state, the guy who was short and undersized, the guy who everybody doubted, the guy who was really good at, uh, as a pass catcher, as well as a running back. Um, Deuce Vaughn is, is special, man. The impact is there. He's special. He, he's so good. And when you watch him play, you just, to me like i dropped my jaw watching this kid he i mean he's he's insane he's insane he's fast he's strong he hits the whole heart he has great vision catches the ball well um he's hard to bring down he has a low center of gravity no he's so difficult to tackle and like he, he has a low center of gravity he i mean he's he makes people pay when they tackle him i mean he he's not he's not soft uh you know who he reminds me of uh, Edwards from LSU, who's with the Chiefs. Oh, Edwards Alaire, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. who he reminds me of. Now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, he's because he does everything. Yeah. Back, you know. Yeah, he he does it all. I mean, he he's. It's crazy to me. He's listed at 176 pounds. I think he's a little bit yeah. thicker than that. I, I think he's. Be. I think he's closer to like 190, 185, 190. Because them his legs are crazy. Mm-hmm. Maybe they didn't uh, update it. I hope so. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, he, he's listed as light. Um, but I'm going to say this. I, I do think he's a dark horse contender for the Heisman Trophy. Um, and I, the reason I think he wasn't mentioned a lot in the, in the race last year is because K-State was so streaky. I, I think with K-State's streakiness last year, it didn't allow them to get really on a, on a heater and get him the national recognition and they lost all their big games last year. So he never really, you know, never really blasted off into the mainstream. But it's uh, insane to think that somebody can go off of 1400 rushing yards and almost 500 uh, receiving yards yeah. and not have any kind of recognition. Right. He is almost a 2k all purpose player. Um, you know, I want to talk about very quickly against Baylor. He averaged 11.6 yards a carry. <laughs> Uh, against KU, 14.7. Against Stanford, 9.5. And, and we know Stanford's defense is always pretty good. 5.5 uh, against Nevada. I mean, he he just 7 yards per carry against LSU. That's an SEC defense. You know, I know LSU wasn't great last year, but they're not – they're no slouches. Uh, I, could see, I could see Deuce Vaughn's con- name coming up in the Heisman conversation. That's all I'm saying. Colin to have a nice role for him in this offense. I think Colin Klein, uh, if I'm the offensive coordinator at K State, I am salivating to get to call yeah. plays for this kid. I, I am, I'm going bananas thinking about it. 
We're running everything between the tackles with Deuce Vaughn. He's going to get lost in the backfield. Nobody's going to see him, and he's just going to be gone. Screen game as well. He's going to he he's so good in the screen game because he's so small. It's hard to find him. Uh, it works so well. Uh, Deuce Vaughn. If you ever by some crazy miracle here, this show, uh, you got a you got a spot on this podcast anytime you want it. We're in the Deuce Vaughn yeah. fan club. Exactly. Uh, but let's go ahead and jump into. Uh, our schedule overview. Um, we we'll, we'll pick up the speed here, kind of talk about you know what what's going to happen with this K State football team this upcoming fall. How, where will they land last year? Like I said, like we mentioned earlier, they're fifth in the Big Twelve, uh, finished eight and five. This year, we're going to get it started. They open the year at home against South Dakota. I I'm going to go with a win there. That's a W. <laughs> yeah, that's a W. Then they're at home again. Wow, they opened the year with three home games. Then they're at home again against Missouri. Uh, I'm going to give them a W there. Me too. Um, then they're at home against Tulane. They're going to start off the year 3-0. and I think so too. I think they're 3-0 and to start the year. And then they go to Norman to play Oklahoma. And I think this is where they get their first loss. I think they're 3-1. and You think You think so? They always mm-hmm. give Oklahoma trouble. Um I, I think I think Oklahoma and we're gonna talk about Oklahoma next week. I think Oklahoma's got something cooking in Norman this yeah, year. Yeah, they might be a little bit pissed off and this I, so. I think you know, I think look, you're a Texas fan. I know you can't stand OU. I think OU's gonna be really, <laughs> really good this year. Uh I have bad news for you. That they they are gonna be OU's. I don't want to disappoint my OU fans, so I <laughs> I will just stay silent about this. <laughs> I think they're three and one after OU. Okay. What do you got them at? You got them at four and zero. Oh? I got I got OU winning that game. Three, okay. Three one. Okay. Three, three and one. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Three and one. Both of us. Then they go. They they're at home against Texas Tech. Man, their home game is their their schedule is so front loaded with home games. Yeah. I got uh, them winning that game. Yeah, I got them beating Tech, so they're four and one. Uh, at Iowa State, I can't remember what I said, but I'm gonna say that they lose to Iowa State. I'm gonna say they beat Iowa State. So I got them at four and two. You got them at five and one. Then they go to because TCU. Iowa State has to replace a lot on defense. So I'm, yeah. I'm gonna go with yeah, five and one. Okay, you're five and one. I'm four and two. Then they're at TCU. I think they win that. I think they're five and two. Yeah, it's gonna take a couple years for that culture to get set in. So I'm gonna go with. Yeah, I'm not high on TCU this year. And then here's where they run into the buzzsaw to me. They're five and two. Then they go, Oklahoma State at home. They're they're playing in in Manhattan. I have them losing that game. Yep. I got them six and two. And I got them five and three. Then they got Texas. I think they lose that game. No, oh, that's going to be a blowout. Six and three. And I Sorry, K State fans. <laughs> and then they get Baylor. They're at Baylor. Um, I, I think they lose that game. Six and four. They're on. They're they're on a losing streak here. Yeah. So I have them at five and five. You have them at six and four. Then they're at West Virginia. I think they get to six and five there. Uh, I think they beat West Virginia. I got West Virginia winning that game. West Virginia is a tough place to play, man. It's the furthest <laughs> every, anybody has to travel. Um, yeah, I got I got West Virginia winning, so that's six and six for me. Okay, and I got them at what six and we both have them at six. No, I have them at. Uh... I mean, I'm at six and five. Okay, I was gonna say, wait, what? Um, yeah, I'm at six and five as well, uh, and then they get Kansas seven and five. Seven five. Uh, yeah. I think. Oh, finished. actually, no. I actually had Kansas beating K State, so I have them. At, <laughs> whoa. Yep. I had them losing that game. Yep. And so they're bowl eligible. I think they get to it's eight and five again. I think they're an eight and five team again. Yeah, my record doesn't. My record prediction doesn't match up with what I think they will do. So. Yeah, you got them at seven six. I got them at eight and five. It's hard when you when you do it game by game. You're like, oh man, I did not pick this the way I thought I did. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, I, I got them at eight and five once again. Um, I do think they're much improved in conference. 
Um, I think they're instead of four and five, I think they're five and four in conference. I think they probably finished four or five, um, maybe third at best. Uh, I reserve the right to, when the season's about to start, revisit schedules. Yep. <laughs> and uh, we will, you know, we'll do our early picks and our, our preseason <laughs> picks, and uh, we'll, we'll go from there. Um, make sure, you know, if you're if you're betting on these games, don't be afraid to pick K State. And when you pick K State, make sure you pick them with prize picks. Um, but for this week. That's going to sign out the show. That's going to get it done here. Uh, We will be back next week to talk about the Oklahoma Sooners, uh, Donnell's favorite team in the Big 12. (laughs) (laughs) Y'all won't want to miss this one. (laughs) (laughs) No, OU is going to be a fun one to talk about. It's a good team. They got a lot of talent. Good head coach Mm -hmm. now. Uh, Not that they didn't have a good head coach before, but uh, Venables is a good coach. And he he's going to to keep that team moving in the right direction. Uh, <laughs> we'll we'll talk about OU next week. Until then, uh, let us know your thoughts in the comments. Um, we'll, we'll you know we we always try to hop in, say hi, uh, do a little bit of feedback. Uh, and if you missed it last week, I will be at the Kansas spring game on April 9th. So if you're going to be there, uh, follow the Twitter, shoot me a DM, say what's up. I, I'll, I'll shake your hand, say hello. Um, I'm not kissing any babies or anything like that, but if you want to say hello, I'll certainly do that. Um, and until next time, you guys, uh, this has been the Big 12 Takeover. I'm Tyler. That's Donnell. Uh, we'll see you next week. See y'all, man. Thank y'all for tuning in.